There's a new video out, bitch. I like the defenders, but they do some stupid stuff, and we'll get to that. So this is a review slash critique of the defenders. First, let's talk about... The story is simple. It talks about four individuals with distinct colors to distinguish them from one another who happen to stumble across an ancient conspiracy that threatens New York. Cowabunga! No, it's not the Ninja Turtles. No. But while we're at it, let's compare them. Daredevil is Leonardo. He's the leader. The only way out of here is together. Matt is still reeling from the death of Elektra. And when we catch up to him, he's debating whether or not he should continue being a hero or just stick to being a lawyer. A sign of indecision. A sign that your mind and your soul are not yet aligned. Jessica is Donatello. She's the smart one. Jessica, despite killing her worst demon, is still struggling with alcoholism. Which makes sense to me. If you become dependent on something to get you going after experiencing trauma, even when you cut off the source of that trauma, the thing you're dependent on doesn't really go away now, does it? Is there whiskey in this? Oh yeah, that's mine. Luke Cage is Raphael. He's the muscle. Luke finally gets that fucking coffee. Do the impossible, see the invisible, row, row, fight the power. And Iron Fist is Michelangelo because they're both the youngest and the most dumb. A thundering dumbass. Danny has some level of self-awareness which I liked. You abandoned them. Because of you, the hand has won. I'm sorry. After they raised you, after they gave you everything you are, you... Let them die. No. <laughs> no! But most people throughout the show treat him with disrespect. Like like here, the main boss Alexandra just shows some condescension like, There, there, child. Tell mommy what's wrong. It got to a point where I felt bad for him at the end. Just a child. Walking with your mother. She made you hold her hand as you crossed the street. You pulled away from her as though you didn't need her. Tell me, what would you give to hold that hand again? <laughs> He's already dead. Now we have these characters in well-paced episodes. They use all the eight episodes well. The three episodes set it up. Everyone has reasons why they're into the plot. When you think about it, there are two sides from the four characters. Jessica really gets the ball rolling on Matt's part. My husband is missing. He's been gone a full week. <sighs> Did you call the cops? No. Why not? They're free. Money is not an issue. Something is wrong, and I know it. John's like clockwork. He, he, he's an architect. He goes to work every morning at 8 a.m. He comes back home every night at 6.30, but lately he's, he's been different. Secretive. Jessica says no, but then... Wrong number. Jessica Jones, do yourself a favor and don't look for John Raymond. Hello. Pro tip, guys. If you want Jessica to do something, tell her the opposite. I tried to hang in, guys. I really did. But whatever this guy's selling, I ain't buying. Sit down and shut up. God damn it, stick. Hogarth suspects that she's up to something, and she doesn't want to get involved directly. I need you to keep an eye on something. Happy to. It's gotta be off the record. Okay. Someone who used to work here, uh, a freelancer. She has a tendency to go rogue. Her name is Jessica Jones. The second she gets herself into trouble, priority one is keeping that trouble very far away from us. Okay. And as Jessica is wont to do, she gets into trouble. What's with Jessica and people killing themselves? Away! Away! That's where Matt comes in. Jessica Jones, stop talking. Hi, this is over. Who the hell are you? My name is Matthew Murdoch. I'm your attorney. She's confused because he should have said, I'm not her attorney. Are you a public defender? 
Uh, no. Then what are you doing here? A friend referred me. He works for... Let uh, me guess. Jerry Hogarth. Right. And since Jessica is digging around, Matt has to dig around. And that's why they end up in the building at the last part of the third episode. Danny is after some hand people. And they manage to find a warehouse. And then this guy shows up who is being tailed by Luke Cage because he wants to save him from his misguided intentions. Listen, I can help you. Hypothetically speaking, if you ever need anything, I think you should go. Ask anybody on this block what I've done or what I'm willing to do. It's too late for all of that. What do you mean it's too late? Nothing, man. Son, it's never too late. Yo, man, I ain't your son. I told you I don't know a damn thing. Ladi ladi, just disintegrating bodies. What? You with the hands? What's wrong? Snake. That was fun. What was I doing again? Who are you? Who are you? They have a misunderstanding and it's a superhero misunderstanding fight. NANI? <laughs> And then I guess they decide to call it a draw since they both leave. <laughs> they leave behind the kid. Oops. Nice one, Luke. And then Luke goes back to his bay and says, Bay, I got beat up. And then she says, What? Who beat you up? This kid with a golden fist. I know that kid. He punched me. You punched first. Seriously? And they talk it out. And it seems that they're gonna have some understanding. And then... You never fought someone to protect someone else? Of course I have. Okay, so what's the difference? The difference is I live on their block. The difference is I'm not some billionaire white boy who takes justice into his own hands and slams a black kid against a black kid against a black kid against a wall. Sorry, I'm white! I'm sorry, I'm male! <laughs> Why? Why am I a monster? The money? That doesn't define me. Maybe not, but that kid is sitting in a jail cell tonight and you're not. Neither are you. Not this time, but I've seen my share of injustice. The guy in the white hat, he's just the beginning. You're not thinking about the bigger picture. And you're not thinking about anything but yourself. Hey, you know nothing about me. I know enough. And I know privilege when I see it. What the actual but the point is, they don't get along. Somehow this speech convinces Danny that there's a better way. Three of them shut down last year. What does that mean? Not much, except that they were shut down on the same day. Before they closed, they all made deposits into one place. I just need a name. Midland Circle Financial. So he decides to confront the hand legally, which is dumb, and we'll get to that. Luke visits the kid in prison. Whoever hired you... Now would you wake up? Who's the guy in the white hat? Why would you stay away? He is next level dangerous. So am I. Check yourself or you wreck yourself. Come on, 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 come on. Is this the hand? Don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it, say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it. You want to help me? My mom, she lives at 555 Edgecombe. Take her some lotto tickets. Tell her from me. Cole, just tell me what you know. Tell mama I love her. He does. It turns out the lot of tickets were a ruse so that the kid can give his mother the money he's been saving up for her. And then... <laughs> oh, my baby! Oh, my, oh, my baby is gone! Proper fucking motivation. So we get back to Iron Fist, who is still stupid. He's expecting that the hand will just listen to him as he threatens them that he'll destroy them via the law. It's it's like he forgot what happened in the first season of his fucking show. Strike him down. 
the girl dies. Withdraw from the duel, and she'll be spared. That's dishonorable. <gasps> what do I care for honor? You get no points in guessing what happens next. Thundering dumbass. Thundering dumbass. I reserve the right to use this thing when I notice some other dumb shit, not just with Iron Fist. Which is convenient because something stupid kinda comes up now. You? Me. Somehow Luke knows to go to the penthouse? We don't see that he knows Danny's up there. Matt and Jessica have a viable reason why they go to the penthouse. Gunshot in the penthouse. How do you know that? Not Luke. Is this some genre savvy thing? What is it? It's a superhero team up moment! Matt discovers his wife who's alive. Electra. They kick ass, they leave. Which sets up the fourth episode. The fourth episode slows things down and is basically exposition. The fourth episode has some problems though. Not the pacing, some stuff. They call Iron Fist the thundering dumbass, which he is. But they blame him for some problem that we don't see on screen that he calls Colleen. And then Stick does the dumb thing. You mean the thing the hand has been tracing? You smash it where we are right now? So they have our last location? You should throw that cell phone in a truck that goes to New Jersey or somewhere else. And the hand will go there, right? This is the point where Iron Fist or Matt should go. So Stick, well done. You spotted the hand play. Of course I did. So you must have a backup plan. We could retreat to one of the chased safe houses, right? What? No, we're gonna stay here. And then Stick does his thing where the hand is an ancient evil organization. Then he introduces the hand. We have Black Hand, Brown Hand, Imperial Yellow Hand, Communist Yellow Hand, and Strong Independent Female White Hand. <coughs> or sh should it be Finger? Ah oh, fuck it, Hand is funnier. Matt and Stick don't talk about Electra and her being the Black Sky. And the Black Sky is a problematic thing because in the first season of Daredevil, they hype it up as this world-shaking thing. That has to be stopped at all costs. And Stick killed a kid who was supposedly the Black Sky. Oh yeah, oh yeah, since we're talking about the first season, what happened to this guy, huh? He would have been useful. Yeah, sure, everyone in the chase died except for Stick, but I don't believe that that guy went down at all. So it seems like the Black Sky is just some super strong person. Electra could beat down people when she was younger. Does that mean she's super strong when she got old? Or did her resurrection have to trigger her black sky potential? I don't know, it's weird, but she works as a Terminator villain, unstoppable force. It's just that the black sky is kind of a letdown when you think about it. For all the talk of a black sky being some sort of oblivion thing. Black sky, the bringer of shadows. It's just very strong person. I mean, look at the kid. He's a scrawny brat who's chained. Maybe it's not a physical strength. Maybe he could have summoned some sort of shadow. And the last episodes are just building up to that climactic battle. Episode 5 also has this fun moment with Luke Cage and Sawande. He's throwing punches, right? You know, the same punches that Danny was throwing around earlier? And Luke's skin doesn't affect him? Stick said something about a couple of moves. He'll slow your pulse till your heart fails. Which implies that he knows some ancient martial art that has pressure points or something that affects you internally. I know some ancient martial arts, Hokuto Shinken, or the Hyuga clan's Hyuga Ryu, Juken Ho. You know how they apply their internal martial arts? Or if anime is too silly of an example, in a show with dragons and a kid with a glowing fist. In this video, we'll be showing you pressure points in Chinese martial arts. It hurts, but he's applying pressure. He does say that you could affect someone's pressure point with a punch. Now you might have seen in some movies, they actually make a knuckle like this and will hit here, just like so. Or let's go to China. 
If this is real, this guy is still throwing a punch. Zawan did us the squeeze thing here. Just like so. But the two finger punch is still a punch. The first punch looks like it's an actual punch. The next two strikes are like light taps. Do you know what would happen to you if you punch someone with unbreakable skin using only two fingers? <laughs> and every other hit he does is a punch or some sort of strike. And he didn't feel that? Really? Best case scenario, Luke is incapacitated, so Wanda's arm is broken. Maybe the hand resurrection process involves your bones getting laced with adamantium. I don't know, they don't explain it. So I'm left with the scene that made me laugh the first time I saw it. As the story progresses, it turns out that Danny is more important than they thought. Now I have the Iron Fist. The key to what the hand seeks. The key to life. To our salvation. The war is over. There's no adamantium, is there? And since Danny is the key, the team decides to bench him. And he doesn't take kindly to that. I wouldn't call this dumb. Maybe it's understandable. Danny wants to fight the hand since forever. And now they're telling him that he can't. He thinks it's a trap. What is dumb is that he doesn't calmly tell the people his thoughts on the matter. He just keeps jumping the gun. If they make you question the people you trust. Danny, just take a deep breath and calm down. Stop telling me to calm down, Luke. Which is problematic later on. The episode ends with Elektra capturing Danny, knocking out the rest of the defenders, killing Stick. This episode also has a good twist. Elektra regains her memories and remembers that she doesn't like when people tell her what to do. I have proven myself to be the one and only true leader. Episode 7 is a breather episode, until the end. I actually like the fight scenes in Defenders. The fight scenes with Iron Fist were great. I think this proves that Finn Jones just needed more time to cook. Or maybe they got a better choreographer. I just don't like the fight scenes at the last part of this episode, especially with Madame Gao. Just show us the Daredevil or Iron Fist fight, those fights were good. Danny does the dumb thing. He knows that the Iron Fist is the key. I know what you want, but you're not gonna get it. Because unlike you, my master taught me loyalty. And he decides to use this anyway. Should have had the way they screamed. I killed them. It's a trap! <laughs> And it's just so cringy that this kid hasn't learned anything. I really think they missed an opportunity with Iron Fist here. He didn't even think that, hey, maybe I'm here because I was too stubborn or hot-headed. Maybe I should calm down a bit. And then he doesn't use the Iron Fist. Maybe the hand captures a loved one. And that forces Danny to use the fist. But this is just, this is just dumb. So they beat everyone up and Daredevil decides to stay with Elektra until he manages to turn her back to the good side or at the very least he'll die trying. And I think it's a nice way to end it. They save New York by bombing the building and everyone's happy except for Foggy and what's her face? Karen. But oh oh my god it turns out Daredevil is alive. <laughs> this twist would have worked if they didn't announce the third season like after the second. I'm like oh no. <laughs> It's weird that these characters don't really have arcs. Danny, Luke, and Jessica are more or less the same persons when they started this series. Matt has some sort of resolution to his issues. Overall, The Defenders is a fun watch, entertaining, but the dumb moments really stand out. It's hard to recommend the show when the main plot's climax revolves around the person being dumb. I'd like to say turn off your brain when you're watching, but that's not being honest. Like 80% of the season was good, even 95 it's just that last bit really just... Ugh. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. I'm almost at 8,000 subs. This is the fastest I've gotten to 1,000 subscribers. Thanks to everyone that subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications. You'll be notified by Kenshiro the next time I have a video. Wonder what's a good watch for the next video.
we can change things. 